We want to write songs that people will play over and over. So we need to connect them with our story and our emotional journey. So today we're going to look at how we can write that into our melody and rhythm. Hey, I'm Craig from the Dot of That Studio. I'm talking to musicians who want to become artists. Musicians who want to have a real go at doing music for a living and to do that independently without a label or without a heap of money. So our welcome today, we're continuing our little songwriting series. We're talking about being creative inside the box. If you missed last week, I'll put a little link up the top here where you can make sure you check out that one, which kind of lays out this uh, inside the box sort of concept that I pitched, um, saying that it's kind of harder, it's harder to write outside the box than it is to write inside the box, and it's almost less effective as well. So we talk, we unpacked structure last week within that. Today we're going to look at um, some of the contents are within the box. So that's melody and rhythm. So to go along with this, I've actually got a free download, a PDF, which you can grab with the link at the bottom, or you can go to dotadate.com forward slash artist. And that's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a guide for this whole thing. I've kind of laid out my songwriting template. So I'm looking at this sort of box. We've got to write everything within this box of guidelines, which is going to mean that we can have uh, a really effective song that actually does the job we're trying to do with our song. Um, so it's not a formula, it's not a recipe, and I did cover all this last week, but this download is going to be pretty much my template, so what I'm checking off as I'm writing a song. Uh, but you can download that, adapt it to your songwriting, and I think it's going to make a big difference to your songwriting, making it a lot easier, and you'll finish a lot more songs. Let's start with melody. We'll unpack that a little bit and talk about how we can incorporate melody into our story. Now, melody is is the tune of the song. It's the part of the song that we recognize probably more than anything else. Uh, maybe if you're really into lyrics, you might recognize the lyrics, but the melody is going to be the tune of a song which is memorable and you can take with you. So if I play, I'm going to play a couple of melodies here and just a couple of notes in, you're going to know what the song is. So we can take away the whole rest of the song and just the melody will tell you what the song is. Ready? How annoying was it that I didn't put that last note in and left you hanging? Somewhere over the rainbow. Easy. What about this one? Now, if you had said Bar Bar Black Sheep, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or ABC, you would have been correct. So melody kind of carries the tune of our song. It's the part that people are singing along and recognizing. We also love melody because it's kind of very natural. So often it's the singing, it's the human voice that we can really relate to and it kind of resonates with us. So melody is very memorable. Um, We can recreate it um, without an instrument. We can just hum the melody. So how are we creating story within our melody? First of all, our melody can really create our mood. So if we have a lyric uh, I got this lyric here, the sun rises up on a new day. So that can be a positive or a negative uh, theme depending on how we're feeling, right? So maybe the sun rises up on a new day, we're thinking, uh, I'm so sick of going through the same old routines every day. Just everything is the same. Nothing's getting better. Nothing's changing. That could be our outlook. So the sun rises up over a new day could be a bad thing. The sunrise up over a new day could be a great thing. Maybe we're optimistic and we're excited for new things. So the lyric by itself isn't necessarily enough to carry the mood of the story. We need to add that with melody. So what can we do? We know that an ascending melody is kind of brighter. So a melody that goes is brighter than one that goes. Right, so we could do, uh, we could say the sun rises up over a new day going up might make us lift or we could go, uh, it's coming down with descending. Or if we wanted to add quick notes, that's also going to sound brighter. So if it was like, that might be uh, brighter and happier than. Even if we went slow ascending. That's, um, that's sadder, more somber than. See, so we can kind of add um, mood with our melody. Is it ascending? Is it descending? Is it fast? Is it is it slow, drawn out? One thing that I think is really interesting about when we're creating story and melody is that you know how naturally when we get to a chorus we speed up, especially if you've played with a young drummer or a guitarist or something. When you get to the chorus, you just naturally just start going. You want it. We want it to lift. The chorus is expected to go somewhere. So something that I find with um, a lot of young songwriters that come in, 
there's not a natural lift when it gets to the chorus. So the best way to do this is, is not with speed. The best way to do this is with melody. So our melody, when we get to the chorus, should just have a natural sort of lift, right? So we could, our melody could be down here for the verse, like. Then we get to the chorus. We could go. So we're down here for the verse. Up there for the chorus. It means there's just a natural lift. So when we're writing, what we're talking about here is writing inside the box. So we want to kind of make some rules for us. We can just quickly check when we're writing our songs. Does our chorus have a natural melodic lift? Does it go somewhere? Now this isn't a hard and fast rule because the chorus can have a drop, but it shouldn't be the same. So if your verse was like, and then your chorus just went, and stayed very, very similar without much dynamic move, you're going to have to put a hell of a lot of production in to try and make that chorus lift. And I've had to do this as a producer a lot of times when the melody doesn't move enough, it's all production. It's like massive big drums or something to, to kind of make, give the chorus a lift that's not naturally there. So the best way to do this is with melody. So when you're writing in the box, look at your chorus. Does it lift a bit from the verse? Is the verse less than the chorus? So there is that dynamic lift or you're doing something like Billie Eilish where your chorus is right down and your verse is a bit up. Is there still that dynamic change where you're bringing in a new section? So when we're doing that, our listener can follow our journey. They can follow our story. They know that the, that they've been taken to a new place. So when you watch a movie, you kind of know when the chorus hits. You know when that big action scene comes in that takes our attention. So that's kind of what our chorus is doing. It's the bit that kind of, all right, now we're, this is the main part. This is what I've been waiting for is this chorus. So we're giving that natural lift to bring that about. Another thing that I think takes a little bit of practice in songwriting, but it's really good if we can get there, is to make sure that our melodies aren't just in neat blocks of four lines. So lyrically, we might write four lines, but if we just make the, the first line go, and then have a gap, and then the next line goes, and then a gap, and then... So we've written one melody that we're playing four times to the verse. What a better, a better way to do it is to make that block of lyric one whole melody repeated once or maybe repeated twice. So you could do for those four lines, go like. Something like that where the whole thing's got a bit more flow and not as much like stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. I think a little bit of gap in it is great because you want to leave a little bit of anticipation, a little bit of a room to breathe, but when we just write these sort of phrase, gap, phrase, gap, phrase, gap, you get a very disjointed melody. So we want our melody to kind of carry us as a listener so we can feel it and flow along with it and kind of follow the lyrical story. But there's a, there's definitely an art to melody writing. If you want to put it in the box, just make sure, I reckon two things you can chuck in your box is does my chorus have melodic lift and do my lyrics flow. Next to melody as a super important part of our songwriting is rhythm. Rhythm can really define the story a lot and, and introduce a lot of tension, but also bring a lot of a release. And another thing that kind of happens so often when we're songwriting is just that we set the rhythm and we just keep it the same. Especially if you're on acoustic guitar, you kind of might get your feel and your strumming pattern. And then you just concentrate on what chords you're going to play and you concentrate on what your lyrics are. You might put some thought into your melody, but your rhythm just is. So when you're looking at it in the studio, the waveform comes in, it just goes up and then it just stays exactly the same for the whole song. So again, when we're talking about natural lift and natural drop, we talked about having these um, in the last video, talk about these structures. So you've got a verse, your chorus lifts, your next verse comes down, your bridge might come down a lot. If we're not changing the rhythm around, it's really hard to define those parts. And if those parts aren't defined, then the listener is just, it's just a bit of blur. You know, the, your three and a half minutes of a song can happen and you didn't realize because it's not engaging you. So rhythm's a great way to kind of move in and out of that story. So rhythm's really divided into timings. So in, in divisions, you know, like a whole note, half note, quarter note, eighths, sixteenths. That's kind of where you divide it. So you can bring in, just say your chorus has like this feel, if you're like. That feel. You want to make your verse less than that. Make So that's like one, two, three. It's like eights. 
with a bit of um, syncopation. But your verse, you might go... and have less. That's now gone back to like a, a quarter note sort of feel or even a whole note sort of feel. And then your bridge, you might go right back down to... Right back down, strip it up, and then get back to your chorus again. You can pull back in your rhythm. I have to excuse my um, my lack of creativity. So again, you just want to make sure that your rhythm is moving in and out with your song. So something within your songwriting checklist, something within your box might say, okay, does my chorus have more drive than my verse? Is there is there a change in, in intensity because of my rhythm when I get to my chorus? Or does my bridge strip back enough? Have I stripped my verses out enough so that it doesn't have the same sort of feel? There's a little bit... So you don't want to completely change your feel. You don't want to add, go from syncopated into um, straight or in shuffle into straight or something like that. But you can muck around with these divisions. So like if we had a kick drum on, it could be like... And then when it got to the chorus, it was like like that four on the floor thing. So it hasn't changed the feel necessarily, but it has brought more energy with just increasing the division. So going from a whole note on the first beat of every bar into that four on the floor thing. And then maybe your hi-hats would be like a... They could bring in a 16th, which just kind of elevates the energy of a song just by adding... Um, divisions of rhythm. So what I would say when it comes to writing rhythm and putting that in your box is just just to be really intentional about it, to actually look at your sections, look at your verse, your chorus, your bridge, and just say, what have I done intentionally in the rhythm in that section to make sure that this song has story, has movement, has dynamics? And we've got to be really careful to not get lazy with those rhythms and just chuck extra ones in. So on guitar, um, it's really easy to just kind of have your rhythm, but then chucking those random upstrokes. So it can be like dun 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 but then we go dun 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 and it's not out of time but it's not like a solid rhythm. So it means when we go to the chorus we want to go bigger. We can't because we've been chucking in all those extra divisions in the verse. So we want to be really, really intentional with our verse. So on piano it's like just random bass notes all the time. You're doing like the if that's our rhythm we go whoops. We just don't need all that extra stuff. And drummers do it all the time with their kick drums. So like a... Is like... You just don't need all that stuff. And if you do, just be really intentional about it so that in other places it's not there. But you want to make sure that the rhythm that matches your melody, because rhythm is all about just bringing your melody to the top, matching your melody, making your melody king. You want to make sure when we pull up our... A sort of template there. What's our chorus doing? What's our verse doing? And it's, it can just be as simple as adding or taking away divisions. So again, have a listen to some of your favorite music and just listen to how the verse is different to the chorus as far as rhythm. So you've got sound. Sometimes a drummer will open up the hats or something for a, a chorus or go to the ride symbol for a bridge or something like that. But I think you'll notice as well, there's probably less snares, there's probably less hats, and there's probably less kicks in the verse so that they can be added back in during the chorus. So um, all again, coming back, let's look at our box. Let's look at our story. How is our rhythm fitting into that? And what can we do every time we write a song to make sure that there's movement because of our rhythm? So I would say at this point, grab that guide so you can kind of have a checklist and then modify it so it's your own checklist. So when you're writing lyrics, when you're writing melody, when you're writing harmony, when you're writing rhythm, you can just check it off against these, these checklists so that you know you've got a song that is going to work and be consumable. And it just takes a lot of the work out for you. No longer do you have to go, oh, what am I going to do with this? You just go, okay, I've got that. I've got that piece. Now I just need to put in that piece. And I think that would be excellent. So yeah, if I can encourage you with that today, once you kind of get this box sorted out, your songwriting is going to come a lot, lot easier. It's going to be so much easier for you to get to the end of a song. It's going to be more uh, inspiring for you to start a song, knowing that you can actually finish it. You don't have to rely on that sort of, um, you know, those however many hours you need uninterrupted so you can just get all the creative flow out. You can kind of have this box and just w work out how to be creative within that. It'll make your songwriting a lot better. And also people are going to respond to your songs a lot better.
if they can follow this journey without having a music degree, if they can follow this journey without being inside your head and having to feel the exact things that you feel, but you're able to actually um, put those out, not just in your lyrics, but in your melodic story, in your rhythmic story, uh, in your structural story, and just take them through it, then people are going to like your songs a lot more. They're going to come back to them. They're going to get into playlists. They're going to get on the radio, all that sort of stuff, because people are connecting and interacting with it and want to hear it. So if I can help you at all, download that download that guide. Just go to www.dotadate.com forward slash artist. If you're listening on the podcast, if you're on YouTube, there's a link below. Just grab that download and then make that your own. So that's kind of the box that I've been talking about here. Make that your own. If your genre is a bit different to that, or if you love having pre-choruses, you love whatever you want, make it your box and then just use it as a checklist and, uh, and bounce off them. So Hey, that's about it. I'm doing uh, short episodes every week, 15 to 20 minutes there on YouTube or on your favorite podcast app. Just talking about this very thing, going from musician to artist and just leveling up and doing that as an independent. So subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. Um, Hey, make some music this week and we'll talk again soon.